On today's show, you'll meet Anna, an archer who shoots like a future Olympian champ. She carries a bow, she's got arrows, and those arrows fly true. There's something special about a handcrafted fishing rod. We found some very special rods made by a very special person. This is Obedient Plant. And a close encounter with the colorful bloom inspired one Minnesota woman to go wild about wild flowers. And later, our Minnesota Bound Classic is a story about a tree that might look like an evergreen, except during the fall, it turns yellow. Don't miss the colorful story about the tamarack tree. Those stories and more next. Minnesota's select GMC dealers present Minnesota Bound. From the North Country, here's Ron Shera and Raven, the Black Lab. Hi, everybody. Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know, we've all been watching the Summer Olympics, right? Well, in our first story, it's about, I think, a future Olympian. Her name is Anna. She carries a bow, she's got arrows, and those arrows fly true. When you're eight years old and your arrows fly true in Las Vegas, we all know what goes on in Vegas is, well, bullseye after bullseye, year after year. And Anna Whitcomb of Princeton, Minnesota, makes it look so easy. practice during like the winter and usually during the, all the competition seasons. I practice probably two hours every day. Once I pull back, I'm, I'm just like concentrating like, come on, Anna, you can do it. Don't blow it. Don't scare yourself. Like I'm always just like this and then I'm always worrying about like if I'm going to go like that or I'm going to go. Let's put it this way, Anna doesn't twitch much. Before reaching the age of 12, Anna was shooting arrows like an archery phenom, roundly supported by an outdoor family, and pushed for bullseyes by a younger brother, Jake, and a kid sister, Marisa. Their father, Andy, is coach Anna's and gonna, trainer. Anna's going to shoot a, try to shoot an inside-out X, Jake's going to shoot a, try to shoot a five, and Marissa's going to shoot a five. guys. Well right now it's the best out of best out of three rounds. So what happens is it looks like Jake and uh, Anna are still in the shooting. Marissa is a little bit outside. So Anna's gotta shoot an inside out X. And Jake's gotta shoot a five. Nice shooting guys. For me is uh teaching kids a sport that the whole family can be involved you know just like my dad he's 82 me and him go hunting and we, we shoot bow together he comes and shoots two three times a week in the shop you know so it's not it's not just uh it's not just a sport that your kid can do it's a sport the whole family can do i started her out when she was two you know i got her first bow you know on it oh what is that is that Anna's bow? And by age six, Anna had a first place trophy. And, well, the trophies and awards just keep coming. Well, this is my Vegas um, trophy, and this is my Iowa state, 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 state um, here. This is a state. This is in Minnesota. This one was in Minnesota. This one was in Minnesota. State here, here, in Minnesota, and in Minnesota. Those are all the ones that I won in Minnesota. Winning Vegas, is that's my determination. Trying to be the first youngest um, woman to win um, Vegas. Anna's amazing archery skills also have been noticed by state leaders at the Capitol. We're delighted to have her here today to have a young woman of her uh, uh, skill and knowledge to be able to do what she does, and uh, I would hope that you would rise and recognize Anna Whitcomb from Princeton, Minnesota. So 
handles everything in stride, which is just crazy for her age. She's very mature about how to handle all the situations, and she never gets too emotional or worked up like some of the other kids do. Anna has been raised in an outdoor environment. The family runs an archery shop, shooting range, and they raise deer to collect and sell deer scents. Oh, there's a buck. Oh, yes, Anna likes to go deer hunting, too, with a bow, of course, and her own camel outfit. And the wait to bag her first deer? <laughs> it didn't take long. And she already knows when her last arrow will fly. I can't pull back the bow ever. <laughs> a Lindstrom, Minnesota artist shares his handcrafted creations with us, his art and his story. Next. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Renewal by Anderson, makers of quality replacement windows and doors. From Anderson Windows and by Pawn America. Up next, you know I have a lot of fishing rods, but there's always something special about a fishing rod that was made by somebody. I've never done it, but in our next story, you'll see a very special rod made by a very special person. Art is not always in the eye of the beholder. Sometimes it's in the hand of an angler. It's time consuming, but when you're done with it, you have a nice finished product that you can be proud of. Say that you did it. Mitch Berquist's art form is all about handmade fishing rods, rods with custom designs, rods of all shapes and sizes. I started making fishing rods when I was 15 years old. I fell in love with it right away. I got a taxia, which is a balance problem. To pass time, I hunt and fish. That's the best golf from the first bear I shot. And also do my rod work. Everything is self-taught, so I've learned how to do different wraps and stuff. I do ice rods, summer rods, casting, spinning. Here are a couple of the rods that I have made. Like this one here is a 6 6 ultralight with a stained cork handle. While the rod maker creates his art, you may have noticed he uses only one arm. It's the only one he has. I lost the arm in 1997 due to a staph infection that infiltrated, which means it came out of the vein and all the medicine burnt all the tissue in my arm. For a while there, I was having surgery at least weekly, if not every three, four days. It's been hard. If you lose your arm in an accident, I think it's more acceptable. But when you go through 65 operations to try and save it, and prayers and prayers and prayers, and still there's nothing that could be done. To start with, I was very angry. I felt like I was cheated. But you can't be mad at anybody because anger gets here nowhere. So I always had to try and find the most positive things, even in the worst situations. I've adapted to do so much with just the one hand and once you're faced with a handicap, you're always faced with it and then you learn how to overcome it. And he does, making rods that fulfill every angler's wishes for fishes. Here is a seven and a half foot medium made for digging walleyes. Anything from a wimpy panfish rod all the way up to a lake trout rod. I make all my handles from either wood or cork. 
after I have the handle assembled, then I go out and cast it and check the bend on it, make sure all the lines flow through all the guides real nicely. There's been times when I've had rods cast so nice I actually hit the neighbor's house down across the road. Whoa! And as long as that doesn't hit the window, I'm in good shape. This here is a reward from the Custom Rod Builders Guild saying that I'm a master rod maker. Fishing rods by a determined artist whose life has been challenging. It's a constant battle to keep watching what he does. Yet, it's how Mitch lives that is truly his best work of art. You know, we encourage him, but at the same time, he's the one who picked it up and started in and bought the components and bought the rod wrapper and everything. Basically, that tells you that, yes, people have labeled me. I don't let the labeling deter me. If there's a will, there's a way. And if there's a way, I'll think of it. Let's find out what's blooming as we hit the wildflower fields with a local Minnesotan who made her mark with her own wildflower field guide. Closed captioning of Minnesota Bound is brought to you by By the Yard, premier manufacturers of maintenance-free outdoor patio furniture and accessories from recycled plastic. By the Yard, maintenance-free furniture. Style, endurance, and strength you can rely on. Like a champion, it's built to last. Call today for your free catalog or go online to buytheyard.net. You know, if we take the time to look, there's lots of natural wild beauty around us all the time. But in our next story, there's a lady who went wild about wild flowers, and we're going to tag along and find out what's blooming. This place has been restored, and this is what it used to look like 100 years ago, 150 years ago. It's just amazing. Katie Chika spends many days walking open meadows but it's what she knows about those places that might surprise you. Here we've got some St. John's wort. This is a, a native spirea. Here, right here, is a uh, blue lobelia. It started out back in about 2005. This is obedient plant. I started walking around the neighborhood. Just this purple wildflower just caught my attention, and I said, what a pretty flower. I wonder what it is. From there, I just took my digital camera, my cheap little Kodak, and took it down the park and started photographing all the different wildflowers I could find and tried to ID them. And that was where it come into a bunch of brick walls because there was so few reference material for things that are specific to Minnesota. Struggling to find answers, Katie decided it was time for a change. I said, well, somebody's got to do it for Minnesota. It might as well be me. She began to research each flower and build a website to record her findings. MinnesotaWildflowers.info A website dedicated to Minnesota's wildflowers, particularly how to identify them. And it launched in March 2007 with about 15 species documented and photographed and everything ready to go at that time. Fifteen was enough to start. Within two years, she had listed 300 flowers, an incredible database. Most people, when they're first starting out and trying to learn stuff, they try to look things up by color. Oh, I like this one. You'll see this in ponds and slow-moving water. The Latin name, a common name, and if it goes by other common names, what family and genus it belongs to. We also have these maps that we started making to show exactly where in Minnesota you might find it out in the wild. The whole thing was designed to help people ID plants because I struggled with it so much myself. 
In 2009, Katie got a boost. She met Peter Juck, a man who shared her passion. We met on a field trip with the Native Plant Society. By the end of that year, he decided to jump on board the website. Peter brought with him 50,000 images. If you click on the enlargement, you get a little slideshow. So I had this large collection. 50,000 images was a real big help. <laughs> People want to know. It fills a need. You know, what is this world we live in? And that's what botany is all about, what it's been always about. What is this world we live in? What are these things around us? Sometimes the answers are surprising. About 20% of the plant species you find out in the wild are not native. Some of them are garden escapees. Somebody planted something nice in their garden and it jumped the fence and ended up in a ditch somewhere and it's just been spreading. Finding Minnesota's native wildflowers might not be easy, but thanks to Katie, naming them will. It's become more or less my life now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob Dreesheim, Managing Editor of the Outdoor News Publications. There's good news if you're in the hunting and fishing business. After decades of decline across the nation, the ranks of hunters and anglers have increased the past five years. According to a national survey that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service recently conducted, the number of fishermen rose 11 percent compared to 2006. The number of hunters rose 9 percent. Here in Minnesota, the numbers didn't climb quite as much, but they are up about 1 percent. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service says the report shows an increase in participation from younger Americans. That's good news, especially when we've got a lot of baby boomers who are retiring and not as active in the outdoor sports. Some highlights from the report, 33 million people aged 16 years and older fished last year and 14 million Americans hunted. Collectively, hunters, anglers, and wildlife watchers spent a total of $145 billion on their outdoor sports last year. So not only is fishing, hunting, and wildlife watching a good, healthy outdoor activity, it's good for the economy, too. For updates on all hunting and fishing seasons this fall, check out the print edition of Outdoor News or view us online at OutdoorNews.com. I'm Rob Dreesline. Still ahead, a Minnesota-bound classic on one of my favorite trees, the tamarack. Minnesota-bound, brought to you by Ellsworth Cooperative Creamery. Hennepin County Medical Center. Summer is short. Play it safe. The law firm of Schwabel, Getz, and Seaman. And by Connecticut. Better water flows from better thinking. In my world, good water is important for many reasons. The first, drinking water. My well water was full of unpleasant smelling minerals. That is, until Connecticut installed my new water system. Now we have Connecticut water. Common sense in a glass. No more expensive plastic bottles. Yes, Connecticut drinking water is clean and worry-free for the whole family. The other important water in my world? Great fishing water. Right, Raven? Connecticut. Better water flows from better thinking. You know, in the coming weeks as you travel around northern Minnesota, you will notice... What was an evergreen tree is no longer green. In fact, it's turning yellow. Well, that's just part of the story of an amazing tree, the tamarack. It's a tree lovelier than poetry, to paraphrase Joyce Kilmer. It's also a tree most of us see without knowing what we see. Call it poetic justice for the tamarack tree. It looks like an evergreen one day, only to look, days later, like an autumn maple. The tamarack's an interesting, it's, uh, it's what we call a deciduous conifer. It's one of those break the rule trees. The tamarack is a tree that um, has needles on it, has up to 15 small needles in each cluster. That's, that in itself is not unusual, but what's unusual about it is that each fall, those needles turn bright yellow uh, into a golden fiery yellow, and then they uh, drop from the tree. In early America, the pioneers thanked tamarack for lots of things. A concoction from the leaves or bark cured everything from piles to diarrhea. As the days of summer change to autumn, the tamarack, too, begins a transformation from plain green to brilliant yellow. 
Maybe tamaracks glow simply to be noticed. Author James Boswell once noted, we must take our friends as they are. Perhaps the same should be said of the lowly tamarack. After all, any tree that cures diarrhea is a friend of mine. A rather fascinating tree, wouldn't you say? And also very beautiful at this time of year. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sharon, of course, always the star of the show. And she knows it is Raven. Yeah, I know, I know. Guests appearing on Minnesota Bound receive gift certificates to Crave Restaurants. Fresh, vibrant, American. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.